Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub and as a part of today's video, we are going to talk about the difference between stress testing and accelerated testing. Now sometimes these terms, these two different terms may look uh, same but they are not. And this could be a potential interview question for you. And hence it is very important to understand the difference between these two terms the stress testing versus accelerated testing and as you must have seen the videos of mine uh, which are generally published under the platform of pharma growth hub the pharma growth hub is the platform to support people in terms of understanding the complex topic in a very simple way in case if you are not yet uh, subscribed to our youtube channel in case if you are watching this video onto the youtube please do subscribe because it is very important for you to watch each and every video that i keep on publishing and in case if you want to have the quick update onto the whatsapp now there is a link given in the description you can click on the link and you will join one of our whatsapp group thank you so much for your continuous support okay so let us talk about the stress testing first and this is the point number one so stress testing is conducted to understand the intrinsic stability of a molecule. Now what is mean by intrinsic stability? The intrinsic stability means what is the natural way the molecule undergoes degradation. You must have heard someone saying okay now this is the molecule which is unstable in acidic pH. That is the intrinsic nature of the molecule. That molecule is not stable under the acidic condition so similarly you are going to study the degradation at various conditions to determine to understand what is the intrinsic properties of your molecule what are the different degradation pathways that your molecule undergoes so the study is called as the stress testing let us now understand the first point of accelerated testing. So accelerated testing is generally conducted to understand the excursion outside storage condition. For example, in case if your product is supposed to be stored below 30 degrees Celsius. But is it really possible to store your product always below 30 degrees Celsius? So there could be situation, for example, during transit, transportation, the temperature can go outside 30 degrees Celsius. So in case if such situation happens, this is called as excursion outside storage condition. So how long your product still will remain within the proposed expiry date outside is, uh, you know, the storage condition is generally predicted by accelerated testing the point number two when it comes to stress testing is the stress testing is generally carried out under severe conditions in terms of higher temperature higher humidity but that is not the case there are another conditions like hydrolysis across different phs there could be a uh, photostability excursion studied there could be a oxidative degradation studied so all these conditions are much more severe and may not be really possible during the the life of the product during the storage of the product but still you conduct that and if the conditions are very very severe then you are actually conducting the stress testing let us now understand what is the second point for the accelerated testing. So accelerated testing is conducted at generally 40 degrees Celsius and 75% RH. 40 degrees Celsius and 75% RH in case if your product is stored at room temperature. In case if your proposed storage condition is the room temperature or 
The accelerated storage can, or accelerated testing can be conducted at 25 degrees Celsius at 60% RH. In case, if your product is proposed to be stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. So these are the two possible accelerated conditions and they are purely based on to what? Based on to your proposed storage condition. I hope you understand the uh, accelerated testing conditions. Let us talk about the third point. So the stress testing is generally carried out on a single batch. Whereas the accelerated testing is conducted on at least three different batches. The fourth important point, the stress testing is carried out to propose a test procedure, to propose a test procedure. So you will conduct the stress testing and then probably based on to your stress testing, you will understand whether your, your analytical test procedure is really suitable for uh, the intended purpose and especially the specificity or selectivity is confirmed by the stress testing. We call that as a forced degradation study during the method validation. So the stress testing also helps. The stress testing also helps in proposing, in confirming whether the test procedure is really suitable for the product. It can be assay, it can be related substances. Whereas the accelerated testing is conducted to propose the shelf life of the product. So there is a guideline available in the ICH which is Q1E, estimation of uh, shelf life for the drug substances or the drug product. So according to that guideline, in case if you have a six month of accelerated data, how much can be proposed shelf life based on to the extrapolation? If the third month is the available accelerated data, how much can be the proposed shelf life based on to the extrapolation? So you can understand that the accelerated testing is actually helping in proposing the shelf life. The fifth point is the stress testing is conducted to identify potential stability issues. The word potential is very, very important the likely to be stability issues, the possible stability issues, because you are, you know, uh, exposing the sample, sample under very harsh condition, very severe conditions. So you are thinking that probably, you know, I will be able to generate all possible degradants. So they are actually the potential degradants. But when you look at the accelerated testing, that condition is not that uh, vigorous. Accelerated condition is not that severe. And you may have the, the few degradation products. So the accelerated condition will identify actual stability issues. So potentially the degradation products identified under accelerated condition can be the subset of uh, degradation products observed during the stress testing. Proba ideally should be, but that should not be the case all time. Let us understand the sixth point. The stress testing is, I mean, the significant change is not applicable during the stress testing. Whereas the significant change is very much applicable during the st accelerated stability testing. So what is mean by significant change? In case of API, drug substance, right? Failure to meet the specification is called as the significant change. So during the accelerated testing, if you found that, let us say at six months, okay, so all uh, my drug substance particular batch is not meeting the specification. That means you can say now the significant change has occurred. Whereas in case of stress testing, there is no term like significant change to be used. 
So significant change term is not used applicable for the stress testing, but significant change is very much applicable for the accelerated testing. And we know that you know once the significant change gets occurred, you have to stop this testing the sample at accelerated condition, and you need to test the sample now for the intermediate condition. Last but not the least, the failure in meeting the specification need not to be routed through out of specification investigation in case of stress testing. I mean, see, there are very much possibility that your sample is going to fail for the proposed specification in terms of impurities, in terms of their assay. So those failures need not to be investigated by OS. But in case of accelerated testing, failure in meeting the spec need to be investigated through out of specification procedure. So this is or these are the differences you know between stress testing and accelerated testing. I hope you must have got an overview on how to answer this question, the difference between stress testing and accelerated testing. Thank you so much.